In this video we are going to take a look at the results of the Dallas Open Grand Tournament and how the Death Watch has been doing this time. Having recently been labeled as bottom tier, can the Death Watch prevail against seemingly impossible odds? First we are taking a closer look at the mentioned tournament and some numbers. In the second part of the video, we will look at the top Deathwatch army list of the tournament, what rank it achieved, and how it compares to previous tournament lists. Then, for the final part, I will offer my personal conclusions and a quick wrap-up. Welcome to Swiss Hammer, your channel for modeling in Warhammer 40k. My name is Temmer, and I will be guiding you through this video. Not too long ago I released a video on how the Death Watch ended up being the top marines of the Motor City Mayhem Tournament. To quickly summarize, despite having been ranked as bottom tier by popular content creators due to their bad ITC battle dataset win rate and very little top table success, this was the second tournament in April where Death Watch managed to achieve rank 6, seemingly in spite of all predictions. Prior to the Motor City Mayhem tournament, a primary heavy Death Watch list already achieved a similar place at the RATCON 2021 tournament. The link to the video and army lists is in the description. With this little introduction out of the way, let's have a look at the Dallas Open 2021 Grand Tournament that took place last weekend, April 30 to May 2nd. The tournament had 172 players, with 58 of them playing Space Marine armies, making over 33% of all armies. A variety of chapters were present, and once more, Dark Angels being the most commonly seen, though Blood Angels and white scars weren't far behind. This is not a huge surprise, as all of these chapters are considered to be upper tier among Space Marines. As far as the Death Watch goes, four armies were present, which makes roughly 2.3% of the armies present. This number puts them slightly above the expected average based on the ITC stats released back in January 2021, showing that the amount of Deathwatch players is roughly 1.8%. So basically, the faction was slightly overrepresented, though given the generally low amount of Deathwatch players, this is nothing out of the ordinary. Looking at the overall tournament results, the top 5 ranks were as following. Drukari, Eldari with Drukari, and do not get fooled by this, over half the points were actually Drukari. More Drukari, Drukari again, and then once more Drukari. Oh, and if you haven't seen enough Drukari yet, rank 8 was also Drukari, putting a grand total of 6 Drukari lists into the top 10. Nothing to see here folks, everything is perfectly balanced. Just as back with the Iron Hands in 8th edition, all we have to do is adapt our lists. A little salt aside, the only Space Marine army that made it into the top 10 were the White Scars, achieving a respectable rank 9. So, where is the Death Watch? Out of the four players in total, the only one making it into the top 100 was Nelson Cruz on rank 28. Only 28? But Tamer, Death Watch is bottom tier after all. Goonhammer has been correct all along. Well, hear me out first, guys. Overall, I think it is fair to say that Space Marines did not do overly well in this tournament, given the fact that they made for a third of all armies present. In fact, the Death Watch in rank 28 is the fifth highest Space Marine army in this tournament, only beaten by several White Scars as well as one Blood Angels list. Out of the 58 Space Marine armies, only 11 made it into the top 50 and only 24 into the top 100. This means that the majority of Space Marine armies performed below average. With that being said, let's have a look at the 8 tournament rounds of the top performing Death Watch list. The games were as following. Round 1 was a win against the Dark Angels, 
followed by a loss against the Chaos List. Round 3 then a win against the Nits, followed by another close loss against Necrons. Round 5 then was another win against Yorks, followed by two draws against two Space Marine armies, Dark Angels and Blood Angels. The final round was a win against Death Guard. All in all, we have losses against Chaos and Necrons, which I would say are not the typical top tier ratings one would expect. The two ties are against what I would argue stronger rated Space Marine chapters, and then we have the victories against a mixture of factions, two of them being Xenos, which puts the Death Watch at the bigger advantage when compared to other matchups. All in all, 3 out of 8 games were against Space Marines, technically no losses, but of course the two ties could have gone either way. Then again, 3 out of 8 games were against Xenox factions, with 2 wins and 1 loss being in favor of the Death Watch. Lastly, and perhaps a bit surprising given the amount of participants, no games played against Rukari. With the games covered, let's have a look at the actual list. We are still recovering from the shock of seeing three Corvus Black Stars, perhaps you may want to close your eyes now. For the HQs, we have two pretty basic picks, a plain captain with a mastercrafted bolt gun, and not much else, except for the nowhere to hide warlord trait and the tome as a relic. Furthermore, we have a basic librarian with the ever popular Senna Perch discipline and the commonly seen powers. He's also carrying the beacon and chalice and making use of the paragon of their chapter warlord trait. What stands out here is that he picked the Imperial Fists one, far more commonly seen is the Ultramarines one for the chance to regain CP. Moving on to the troops. Here it comes, six Proteus kill teams. And just when we thought that there couldn't possibly be more Proteus kill team spam, this one is on a whole new level. Out of the six kill teams, four are pretty much the same. Five Deathwatch veterans with the classic loadout, bolt gun and storm shields, paired with three Deathwatch terminators with cyclone missile launchers. Three is the maximum number of heavy weapons you can put on the Deathwatch terminators. On the fifth kill team, he went a little creative and put stalker pattern bolt guns on the wets before adding once more the three terminators with the cyclone missile launchers. Then the sixth and final kill team consists out of eight Deathwatch veterans with melt guns and storm shields, being supported by a black shield with a heavy thunder hammer and a single van vet with a jump pack. To round the list up, there is the obligatory primary apothecary with the selfless healer warlord trade. He is also the warlord of this list, making use of a second warlord trade, optimized priority, as well as the Vox Espiritum. I'm going to be honest with you guys, I had to look this one up. It's the one from the Space Marine Codex, increasing the aura range, which I suppose makes sense with double auras on this character. So what can we take away from this list? First of all, the HQs are about as basic as it gets, pretty much force multipliers only. Then it is certainly infantry heavy, spamming Proteus kill teams, which make up the big bulk of the army. In previous videos about the state of the faction, we already discussed Cyclone missile launchers and how they would make for potentially strong candidates in mixed unit Proteus kill teams. Well, I suppose 15 of them is certainly making a statement. 15 men, I used to play the Archangels in earlier editions, have quite some Terminators, but I'm not sure if I have that many Cyclone missile launchers in total across both armies. Anyway, the fairly similar kill team compositions aside, there is one kill team that stands out with the Melt Gun and Storm Shield combination on the Death Watch veterans, as well as the Heavy Thunder Hammer on the Black Shield. I recently covered the Black Shield in a separate video where I pointed out the benefits of putting the heavy thunder hammer on him because of his weapon skill of 2 plus basically negating the hit penalty of the hammer. Link to the video is in the description. The lone van wet is most likely there for the fallback and shoot stratagem, which makes sense given all the melted guns. 
What's fairly unique about this list though, is that while it has a lot of kill teams, the majority of them have 8 models and therefore cannot combat squad. Given that they have terminators, this will impair their movement. He did put a bunch of teleport homers, which I suppose are there in an attempt to compensate for the lack of mobility. Across the 6 kill teams, that's 50 obsec bodies with a lot of storm shields though, so I imagine that they are a nightmare to get off whatever objective they eventually take. Then finally, to round things up, there is the obligatory Chief Apothecary. I was starting to miss this one. All in all, this list has very few common elements with those seen at Ratcom and the Motor City Mayhem tournaments, though I would argue that once more some elements are taken to the extreme. Proteus kill teams, obviously, and the ever popular invul saves across the army. We are also seeing some recommendations from my previous videos as well as the Goonhammer article being put to good use, Cyclone Missile launches on the Terminators and the Heavy Thunder Hammer on the Black Shield. While I wouldn't necessarily put myself into the camp of extensive Proteus kill team spam, I do think that the Deathwatch veterans, regardless of how many of them are in any given list, are really making a case for themselves. With Firstborns having been somewhat stigmatized and Proteus kill teams called obsolete by certain content creators shortly after the release of the Deathwatch supplement, I think it is fair to say that we are continuing to see them doing well with a variety variety of loadouts. Bolt guns and storm shield, bolt gun and power sword, combi flamer and storm shield, stalker pattern bolt guns, I think all of these have been proven to work well at the variety of tournaments. With Drukari running wild, I think there is a point to be made that getting more bodies on the table and them being obsec on top can be preferable over a smaller sized but more elite armies with expensive models. Mixing in storm shields also tend to make the kill teams more self-sufficient. What is a bit unfortunate though is that this specific list did not face any Drukari at the tournament. I would have loved to see that infantry heavy theory being put to the test. As always, I recommend keeping an open mind for all the kill teams available to the Death Watch, as I think we can make good use of all of them. To wrap things up, after Death Watch had two strong appearances at the major tournaments in April, they continue to surprise. In the Dallas Open Grand Tournament, where Space Marine armies have been omnipresent, yet have not been doing that great overall, Deathwatch has managed to place rank 28 out of 172, making them the fifth highest placed Space Marine army of the tournament. Overall, Drukari have completely dominated to the point where they now put the old 8th edition boogeyman Iron Hands to shame. Unfortunately, or perhaps fortunately, the highest placed Deathwatch list did not face any Drukari opponents. Over the course of the video, we have looked at Nelson Cruz's Deathwatch list and matchups. What stands out in particular are certainly the main bulk of the army consisting out of six Proteus kill teams, with the majority of them featuring Deathwatch veterans with bolt guns and storm shield, as well as three Terminators with Cyclone missile launchers. The sixth Proteus kill team is making use of melt guns, a black shield with a heavy thunder hammer, and a lone vanguard veteran with a jump pack. The rest of the army consists out of two pretty basic HQs, and and the obligatory primary supporticar. While this list is fairly infantry heavy and quite different from what we have seen at the previously covered April tournaments, 50 OPSEC Space Marine bodies is certainly a force to be reckoned with. All in all, I would say that Deathwatch has done well, all things considered. So that's it for the Dallas Open Grand Tournament and the current state of the Death Watch in 9th edition. What do you guys think about this particular list and how do you rate scoring rank 28? Have I missed anything important? And how have your games been going as of late? Let me know in the comments. I would also like to mention that I have freshly launched a Swiss Hammer Facebook page where I will be posting links to my videos as well as articles I find of interest. I do read a lot about the hobby, but not all of it will always end up as its own video. 
I look forward to seeing you there as well. I do also have a Patreon page. If you like my content, any additional support is greatly appreciated as it helps me invest into future videos. As always, thank you very much for watching guys. Your continued support is greatly appreciated. I hope you have been enjoying this video. Give me a thumbs up if you did and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thanks again and see you next time.